Hello and welcome back to Paradox Computing. Um, I thought I would just show off my latest project. It's uh, this mining turtle. Um, and I'll show you what he does. Uh, let's get down close to him. Yeah, that was probably good. So if you uh, click on this guy, um, you'll see there's uh, this screen here, which basically tells you what you can do with him. Uh, it's a direct control program, which allows me to use WASD, uh, space shift control, E, Q, and um, the arrow keys. <laughs> Yeah, just you know, ran through that to directly control him. So you can see me here. Uh, you know, I'm turning him right. I'm turning him right. I'm going forward. I'm going backwards. I'm going up with shift, down with control. Uh, if we give him some blocks, let's give him uh, some uh, grass block there. There we go. Uh, and E to place. There you go. Space to dig. Pretty cool. Um, we can select slot. So we'll say put some stone in there. And then using the arrow keys, we can select slot two. Okay, I'm going to place that and then dig that up. There you go. And we can now select the cobblestone if we want to. Um, and yeah, it's uh, very handy, uh, especially, you know, getting through maze stone, I guess. It would be, you know, one thing where it would be handy getting to, you know, diamond ore in hard to reach places, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so it's a fun little program. Uh, definitely got some, uh, you know, handy applications, um, I'm sure. Uh, it'd be nice if the uh, you know computer craft display could uh, be transparent. I don't know of a way to do that, but um, I'm sure there probably is. Uh, or if not, maybe that's something someone wants to mod in. I don't know. Anyway, let's go into the code. So I always press Q here and it gets us into the code. Um, oh, I should probably mention I'm just using I'm using a shader pack at the moment and really enjoying how that looks. Uh, it makes the game look quite cool. The motion blurs a little off-putting, but uh, it's not terrible, and yeah, I forget the name of the pack, but if anyone's interested, I'll, I will post the link, because it makes the game look quite nice. Um, okay, so, very quickly, getting into the code here, so let's go edit startup. Okay, so, um, here at the top, we've just got, um, this is just screen display stuff, so, uh, with this, uh, term.getSize, we're getting the size of the monitor, and then we're just seeing the positions to write Q, W, E, that, it's just that display screen that you saw at the beginning, that's pretty easy, um, this will be up on Pastebin if you want to use it, so, um, if you're really interested in the display stuff, go through there, but it's all pretty simple. Um, pretty easy to use. Let's get into the guts of the program. So the uh, while true do loop. Um, so here we are. Uh, so basically, this works off a pull event system. So it's um, you've got your three uh, parameters here. Or sorry, okay, you've got the event parameter one, parameter two. Uh, these are you know three variables which are getting their values from OS dot pull event. I don't think I even need parameter 2 in there. In fact, I could completely get rid of that, so I'll do that later. But, um, so the way events work, I've gone to this in previous videos, but basically uh, os.pullEvent will just pull whatever event happens on the computer. So if you're, it's whenever you press a key, basically. On Turtle, it's just whenever you press a key. And what we'll print, uh, spit out is the, um, uh, the event will be key, or the character, and um, P1 will be, so sorry, will be key or char for character. Um, and the event will be whichever key you actually pressed. Um, and in fact, let's just, uh, let me demonstrate that with um, this little listen program I made. Um, and this will show you. So if I press T, what we're getting here is it's uh, key 20 and character T. So key and char of the event and parameter one is that and basically whenever you press uh, a key that's a character so you know abc blah 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 uh it's going to spit out two events where if i just press say shift all it spits out is a key and the key number so sh uh, shift is a key is key 42 that's easy and this is me pressing control t <laughs> okay so let's go back into startup uh and we'll just get quickly get back down to where we were Okay, so basically this just works off using that. We're just pre setting event and we're just saying, listen, really, just for this variable, um, or oh, for parameter one, um, and we're just saying, so if P, so if we press A, it's going to go, okay, the um, parameter one is A, 
turtle turn left. If we press S, it's going to do the same thing, but turtle dot back. And it's all just else ifs looking for what key you press. It's very, very simple. So W forward. Um, this is where it goes key instead of using the character because this is for shift for up. And I think the one below it's probably control. Yep, so shift is key 42, control is key 29. There you go. If you didn't know that, you know now. The more you know. Um, okay, uh, this one's just to quit. So you press Q and it uh, clears the screen, uh, sets the cursor position back to uh, top left-hand corner, and breaks the loop, ends the program, and you'll be back at the main, um, you know, main console, whatever. Uh, this is for selecting key, uh, selecting the slots. It gets just a little bit more difficult here. Uh, so we're saying slot equals, um, oh, by default, uh, up towards the top, it says slot equals one. So we're just saying by default, we want slot to equal one and the um, turtle's going to have slot one selected. And so we're saying if slot, um, to start off with, if slot is greater than 16, because there's only 16 slots in the turtle. So if slot um, gets up to 17, we want to reset to one because if the character, if the, um, sorry, if the user's selected, gone through all the slots, go up to 16, we want to return to one. So if slot is greater than 16, slot equals one, and it will return to slot one being selected. Here we, here it is, select slot. Um, but otherwise, uh, if it's not greater than 16, uh, we're just going to um, select slot, and um, because we did slot equals slot plus one here, then it will have already selected the next slot. Um, and yeah, bam, or the slot number, sorry, will already be the next slot and the turtle will actually select that there. Very easy, same thing going backwards. If a uh, slot gets down to less than one, uh, we don't want it going down to slot zero because there is no slot zero, it'll select slot 16. Easy, easy peasy. Um, and that's basically how it works. Uh, it's a very simple little program. Um, but allows you to just do some, uh, you know, some fun turtle guidance to the direct control, um, which I know, you know, is easy. So if you want to even just put this into your turtle folder in your Minecraft, um, in with all the turtle programs, um, so you could just type it at any point if you want it. Um, yeah, you do that. Um, or ask your server admin to do the same. That way you've just always got this. And it'll all be up on the paste bin. Um, so just to end the video, I just want to show off something I like that uh, me and a mate made. I'm not going to go into code or anything, but it's very quick. And it's uh, it's a bit of fun. This is how we order nether stars on, um, on our server. Uh, so if we go, I, I don't know if you're familiar with applied energistics, but um, you can use applied energistics to craft things. Um, and if we go nether star craft, we just want one of these guys. And what it does, if I can get over there fast enough, is over here, you should see, uh, yep, yeah, this turtle bro here is actually building a wither skeleton. And then he's going to quickly finish that, get back inside his force field there. And now we have a wither. So not, sorry, no, a wither skeleton, skeleton, an actual wither itself. And he's charging up, and bam um, he is actually inside, oh, this is quite loud, oh, I was going to with it, um, he's actually inside another force field, it's just invisible. <laughs> we made the outside force field invisible to freak people out. Um, inside that, oh sorry, that force field that is, um, the outer force field is also, uh, does mob damage, so yeah, he'll be taking damage from that. And I'm out of food. Wow, we gotta get on that. Um, so then he's about to die, and we'll see uh, the Nether Star drop. There it is, and it gets picked up by these uh, uh, deployers or wherever they are. I forget what they're called. Um, and then you'll see that it is returned to um, the AE or ME, sorry, network. So if we go Nether, there it is. There's the Nether Star. Um, that is a fun way of doing that, I reckon. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Um, if you're interested in how this all works, I'll go into it later, but it's very simple. There's a computer that's talking to um, this guy over the red net who just turns that in a force field on and off whenever this guy wants to slip out and slip back in. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please like or subscribe if you feel so inclined. I'd very much appreciate it. Um, and yeah, stick around. Thanks for watching.